Okay, so we're live. Welcome back to the Magic Minds podcast. You're watching and listening to the Liberty's number one podcast. Yup, the Liberty's. Yup, the fucking flats. <laughs> On the show today, I'm joined by Jer Redman. Jer, what's the crack? How are you, Matt? How's things, pal? I'm delighted to have you on, Jer. Really, really am. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. And I know from watching your stuff online, you've done a ton of podcasts. And I said to you just before we get started, I'm sure at times you get a pain in your hoop with this shit. Yeah. I do. You get a pain in your bollocks. Listen to yourself, you know, your own story. Um, and the others. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure of, uh, I have a pain in your bollocks. Listen to others. They have a bollock, pain in the bollocks. Listen to mine. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your honesty because I'm in the middle of talk sometimes and I go, I'm actually sick of listening to myself talking. Yeah. You do. But look, that's why we need to be versatile in our stories and continue to grow. Because if we continue to grow, we can continue to tell that story, the new story. I love it. I love it. Why did I ask Jared to come on the show? Jared is a coach in Overstown. He's also what I would describe as a light worker. Jared brings light into prisons because he knows what it's like to be in the dark. He's coming from a life of crime, a life of difficulty. And now he's showing people, man, woman, child, whoever, that he meets with, that he's a light worker and that does hope, in your words, does hope out there for people, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think it's important for the likes of myself and other people with experiences, lived experiences, to reach back and um, create hope for them people because it's hard when you're in that, that dark light and you don't know how to get out. And it might just be that one person that comes into your life that has a similar situation to you um, that you can resonate with. And you would say, do you know what, that's me. And now look where he's at. But then also, what did he do to get out? You know, a lot of people won't take up counsel, one, for financial difficulties because they are very expensive. But another thing, another reason why he wants because he hasn't got that strength within them to actually forced accept responsibility for where they are. Um, and sometimes it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility um, to get out of that hole because no one comes back for you. Trust me, nobody comes back and gets you, I'm only you. Is no one coming to save you, is that what you're saying? No one's coming to save you. Now, you've got all the resources and you've got all the inspirational people around there telling you how they done it, but no one came back for me. I came back for myself. My soul was saved by me. Um, I made me. That's my comment, yeah. Yeah, I love it. There's, there's, there's two things. No one made me, I made me. Wow. Wow, you're an expression of the universe. I love it. And that's exactly what you're saying. You said something there that I thought was really poignant. You reach back. Yeah. You help people yeah. look back. Or you help people. You know what it's like to be back. I reach back and, and bring them forward. Yeah. Yeah, with the experience I had. Because I know it's like to be in that dark hole. And I know it's like to have no one come near you. And leave you there. And give up on you. And just call you scumbag. And, but there was a reason why um, I was... I was exposing all them dark emotions on people and negative emotions. There was a real cause to my issues. Um, never judge a book by its cover, which I've done many a times myself. Don't get me wrong, I'm no angel. Help me do it. But I do know now never to judge a book by its cover um, because, as I said to you earlier, we could open the book on any individual and, and read through it. We'd say, is there any wonder that person ended up on that role? Mm -hmm. Because it's easy, easy to point the finger. It's the easiest thing to do, to have empathy around that and, and actually think about what that person has gone through. And what I do is, even when I went to the prisons and I walk in the kids' prison, which is, it gives me fucking so much fulfilment. Look at your eyes when you just yeah. said that. Look yeah. at your smile. Lights up. Like, lights up. Yeah, lights lights up. up. That's when you know what someone's doing yeah. is the right thing to do. Like, when I walk in there, I light up. I, lo I went to Overstown and I was representing Solace Project. He asked me how I'm to do a talk. I was a couple of kids, high profile kids on that. I didn't give a fuck. I don't care what they yeah. did. I've got compassion, empathy for them. But it was an amazing experience. Even in a difficult environment, I enjoyed it. Yeah. But we don't get to judge people. No. Who are we to be judging anyone? That's not our, that's not our purpose in this world. We're not here to judge. No. We're here to help. Here to help. And if you're not here to help, shut your mouth. Wrong time, but... <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Isn't it what? You know how many people out there opinionated and they have no clue what it's like to be on the other end of the stick. They've no clue what it's like to have someone locked up. They've no clue what it's like to be locked up. They've no clue what it's like to have no mother and father. They've no fucking clue. So fuck, keep your opinions yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then again, we do need them people at times as well because they do help us out of that hole because we can prove our point. Yeah. Because I prove my point through a lot of people. Um, 
then when I proved my point, I didn't care what he thought. They don't actually give a fuck what you think because I'm strong now and my internal dialogue is good. You know, so that you know, really resonates with me because I went back like you, done a lot of education, trying to prove because I failed, 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 leaving, failed, failed, drug, whatever. And I was trying to prove everyone wrong. And then when I got to the other side of many mountains I climbed, I went, I actually don't give a fuck. Now I don't even talk about my qualifications, although I've done tons of them. Not that important. No. I'm important. You're important. That's it's, what's important. But growth is important. I think respect is important, you know. And then... Um, just being a good human being is important. You know what I mean? And I think if you are good and you follow a certain amount of rules in your life, like I do a bit of Bible reading. I actually do Bible studies in the, in the prison with the kids. Yeah. For a pastor called John. Do you believe that? And I believe, yeah. I believe we met for a reason. Everything is for a reason. Boy, I'm at the other end of the scale. I was locked up and John is at the other end of the scale of most, oh, you want to see the love this man has. Yeah. He's unreal. He teaches me all the time. He tells me stuff Without me telling him, without me telling him my problems, I don't feel, he gives me little um, passages out of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. fuck her. So on point. Oh, when the student is ready I'm to... I'm thinking like... When the student is ready to master the pair. Yeah. Yeah. It's unreal. Like, if you, if you listen and watch closely, there's messages and gifts in everything. Absolutely. Like, the synchronicities, that's that's ordained. That's divinely ordained, that mean. Would it be all right to, if, if it's okay with you to go back? Tell us about life growing up for you. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, yeah, I grew up in Darnda, North County, Dublin. Uh, like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with this, you know, because I'm not the only one out there that had a bad upbringing. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're just a uh, statistic. Yeah. This is back exactly. you're a statistic. Yeah, so I grew up, there. my home would have been cold, no warmth, no love. My mother and father wouldn't know how to show compassion. Um, my mother would have been an orphan, like, um, not an orphan, she was adopted as a young kid, so she would have had a, a lot of oh. trouble in her life, you know, that I only saw of, I'm understanding now myself after I came through the, came through the bushes myself, and I'm sort of on the other side, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm having more empty around her life and, and even my father's life. My father had got a mother and father growing up, but again, it would have been a hard enough grown, grown up, you know what I mean? My granddad would have been hard enough, to be honest with you. I remember a few incidents, he was a tough enough man, like, it's all generational, but you know what I mean? Yeah. We just continue on and we, we learn from a generation um, and and just happened that my generation was a bad one um, and I ended up in that family. But, you know, growing up, yeah, I'd, I'd have been the kid on the bus that I wanted to sip so I could smell a piss on me, you know what I mean? Um, and I had that a lot of time because I was coach. I was actually in concealing school. Now, why did he put me there? But anyway, look, probably trying to do the best for me. Coach would pull up outside. I remember I used to, I, I used to piss to bed. For whatever reason, me too. I used to do it, and it wouldn't be washed. You usually wake up late, and the bus would be two minutes, and you'd be out the door, smell a piss, and clothes, and you'd be sitting on the bus, and he'd be lying at you. And, like, and that was a regular thing, me. But when I played, I loved fucking soccer. For some reason, I, I, I loved soccer, and, and I felt that was my family, and my family home wasn't, which is sad to say. But look at that's the way it was. I became really good at soccer, um, playing for the Dublin team, playing for Leinster, skills. Then I got trials. Don't fail to come off to watch me a scout. Ended up going over there with trial. I remember I was fucking best look, best name. I was actually playing FIFA two weeks before. My mates got playing. Don't fail. <laughs> you know, Roy the Rover stuff. We used to watch matches today all the time. And next of all, I'm fucking going over the on a trial. Couldn't fucking believe it. Nah, it was like dream come true, right? But if you had ever had a, a dream taken from beneath your feet like that, like that, right? I'll tell you what happened. I got off the flight. Um, went down, met them at Falkirk, do up now Falkirk, went down and I met them and I couldn't open them. Proper dressing rooms, brand new kit I had on, new boots, beautiful. Half time, do I lose 3 1, went off the bench, I scored two goals to make it 3 all. No, you all. Lie, yeah, and I led up the winner, right? They won 4 3. Oh, it's fucking low in a mill, right? Yeah, brought around East End Park, which is an unfair in the Paris, do I call it, and the manager there offered me a YTSU trading scholarship. Believe it, like that's it's basically an apprenticeship, two year contract as an apprentice to start my trade. Went home, um, playing for St. Columbus at the time, couldn't believe it, cool luck. It was a fucking great time for the, for the area to see a kid, you know, that had nothing, that grew up amongst everyone that had nothing, and here I was. This was in the 90s, this was in the 90s, yeah, 90s, yeah. 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 It was time at the Alma Bowl because, yeah, that's I was actually there when that happened, and I got a bit shunned from it. 
sure, look, I didn't, I just, you know, I know on about that politics and all like that. I said, but uh, I was around that time. Anyway. But yeah, six months into that, I got a call from home to say that my dad made a crime, Kulak, uh, manslaughter. Mm-hmm. And I went home to see if was everything all right and the gas was in fucking chaos. In trouble and, you know, my two options, go back to play football or in Scotland or um, I look after my brothers and sisters and be the man in the house. Father was gone. Then my mother left home a month later with another man left. Oh, and they were oh. So they left us, myself and my sister with two, with four kids under the age of 10. Um, what were you at the time? 15 or 16. Jeez. Yes. Yeah. Still, my sister was still doing a leaving certain no. So we all left them, four kids under the age of 10. And then I joined the gang. They were perplexing because people like my dad made the crime against father's revenge and get threats and all. I, I joined for protection, started being a runner, come bringing stuff from A to B, wherever it may be. And then repeating much, not long after that, about a year or two, but so much emotional negativity would enjoy me of what I lost to now becoming this fucking drug dealer. Looking at me, brother and sister, I didn't know what, where my emotions were. Didn't know how to regulate the emotions. I just took drugs because I didn't want to sit with that trauma. Um, and then I spoiled out of control. I used to hit people like that. You owe me money, you got a headphone started. But, 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 but it wasn't about the money, you know what I mean? It was about my internal um, negativity, the trauma, and the. I didn't know how to regulate it. I didn't know whether this just was normal or someone pinched me, we're going to wake up with a fucking dream. What's going on here? And um, everything just went. I went from putting the ball in the back of the net to putting two in the table with, with a flash of a light. Like. So, and again, it's down to other people's actions, right? Other people um, choose to go down this road and then other people pay that price. Mm. And I paid the price for my dad's, um, for his actions. Um, and so did we all. Like, oh, I wasn't the only one that was hurt. The whole family, my brother, there was, you know, he's saving a life sense, you know. So, like, we've all went down the bad road. I thankfully pulled it around. I thankfully, through having a good woman beside me as well, with being my wife, um, you need good people in your corner, you know what I mean, as well. Um, and my wife would have walked away a long time ago. She's still standing there. So I'm very grateful to have her in my life. I think without her, I'd probably more than likely. You know, I was always strong-minded, but I wouldn't be where I am today. That's for, that's for sure, you know. I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. A lot more empty and love. I wouldn't go. Christmas, I'd go for a run. You know, Christmas, I'd go for a run. Wouldn't celebrate Christmas, wouldn't celebrate birthdays because I never had that, them moments with my family. It's fucking sad. The love, do you know what I mean? The love, like Christmas around love. love. Yeah, you know, love. Like your fire, a bit of heat. The toys, your man, that sitting with you playing with them. I never had that. Hey, and that's like someone coming along and speaking Swahili to you. Look, I don't understand that. You know what I mean? And I didn't understand that. And then I would have done that to my kids, only for my wife, help my good family. And she had her own traits and she fucking nailed them into me. You know, this is living. That's not right. You know. And then you have to you have to also be in, in touch with emotions, you know what I mean? And realise it's not right. No. You know what I mean? Like, but, we want to be better. You know what did, I mean? But you didn't know. No, of course. Of course. Like, yeah. But isn't it deadly that she was able to say that she and mind you through the process? Yeah. She done a with oh, love. Yes, yeah, she used to come on. Yo. <laughs> and 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 the inside I wanted it. You know, inside I was like But you were afraid. And I was and I used to say I didn't like it. But, but eternally, I liked it. Really? Yeah, yeah. Look, this is great, but, but I was this hard external person that, even to, even to horse, like, I don't like this, but I really liked it. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Which is strange, but I just always had that external dialogue of, no, 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 and show up shop, but internally, I really want to. I used to always, people that offered me stuff, right? Like, be 10 kids in the room and they'd all get a bag of sweets, and I'd say, no, but I wouldn't take. I just would never take on of anyone because I always found it for myself. I got to the point in my life, after me and dad and ma went, that no one gave me nothing. And I got to the point where I said, I don't want to ask anyone. I'll never ask anyone for that ever again. They can all fuck off. I'm going to get me own stuff. Wow. Yeah. And then even, and as I said, even when I was in any school or a football team, people would be getting tops. But I want it. I don't want it. And everyone else would have it. Be happy. And I'd be like, I don't want it. Just take it. It's a fucking free top. I don't want your top. You know, don't take on that for anyone. Never take on that for anyone. Just fend it from yourself. Just learn from an early age. I'm not depend on no one here. I'm very own here. You basically, the people that were left in charge to mind you and give you the love, they abandon you, yeah. they hurt you. So I can't trust any fucker after exactly. this point because that just looks like kindness. And when I got 
kind of stunt before. I'm not having that shit. I'm not having. I'm not. I'm not having that feeling ever again. Yeah, I'm never gonna, gonna do that. To me. I'm not gonna have that power on me. Wow. Yeah. What was the turning point on that one then? Turning point on that was, I suppose, I got locked up then in 2016, 2014. I got two years, got three years suspended sentence. Um, that night, it was got chased by the guards, thrown two two grams of coke away. They caught me, put a gram of coke in my pocket. I got two years for that. It was reactivated, right? I'm glad it happened. Um, I'm actually glad it happened because it showed me a lot in life. I learned a lot. In money, prison? Yeah. Money can't buy that experience I got. Money cannot buy it. And, and, and I'm very grave. I know it's going to sound weird, but I'm grateful for that experience because things could have got a lot worse if I, if I hadn't have uh, been taught that lesson. Very, very valuable lesson in my life. Um, one was just, one of the main lessons was that I just don't want my dad done. You know, I sat there in my first night in prison and I was crying, going, I just fucking done what he done. I cried and cursed him for fucking years when he done that to me. I had to take my dream. I like four kids at this stage. I was like, I just done what he done. Who, who, who am I? I'm a fucking asshole. I'm an asshole just like him. And that killed me. That hurt my Um, And then again in prison, I show up shopping myself. I just, I'd learn, I knew how to do that. Just, I was actually comfortable in prison because I was used to the chaos. What? Yeah, very, you know, yeah. very comfortable. Like what we said, like going into the prisons, I was com- uncomfortable yeah. going into the Weefield when yeah. he was teaching it there because I know what madness is. Yeah. About, and I felt comfortable around these people. Do you like what in the prison? I was like, yeah, 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 I'm all right. Yes. I went in there, I was Grant, not a bother. Look, took it, look, bedded in, went to school, learned the guitar, went to the gym, you know. Where did you do your stretch? Uh, Mount Joy, start. I actually went to Weefield first, done a Romand, week in Romand there. Talked to Ronnie Messon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wind me up. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Messon. But uh, yeah, then I got sentenced. Uh, went to Mount Joy. My brother was actually on the same land, and so the minute I went in, he, he put you in these Homer Simpson jocks. Fucking, <laughs> that, that fucking disgraceful. So like, you know, when you go in, your cart wrap gets taken off you, which would be your civilian clothes. Yeah. They give you the red clothes, the prison clothes, with green pants, the red top, red short, and boy, Homer Simpson jocks. I was like, what the fuck? But <laughs> well, anyway, I, I was grand. I went up to the land and my brother hooked me up and got me a load of new clothes and all. I was grand. But um, but even when I went up there, like, I, I, I wanted to do my own thing. I was a long wolf growing up, do you know what I mean? Um, so I just done my own thing. Got me jobs and then I got moved to Pats, which is a progression unit, which is for level four. So it's people who want to just get in and get their time done and I want to be active bollocks, you know what I mean? Taking drugs is fine. Done that. Doing a bit of maintenance work over there. Again, done done a marathon in the in the uh, the yard of the progression unit. Done a full marathon. I uh, got me watching it. Then done a full marathon. So I was always still hitting goals in the prison. You know what I mean? Well, I was always goal oriented. I always loved to suffer. You always used to do things that people didn't want to do. Like you, like what? Give us a example. Like a marathon in the yard. Like people looking at me going, "You're something wrong with you. You're locked up. And you're doing a marathon in the yard." But I said, "I wanted that pain. I fed off that pain. That was my medicine." And when I was outside, it was grand. I could take drugs for the pain. But now I hadn't got access to, to as much drugs as I would like. So I hadn't got, I always had that control over everything. Yeah. So I went and done drugs. I needed the drugs. Yeah. I needed access. Yeah. And I'll stop when I want to stop. That's always like that. Right. So in there, I knew I hadn't got that. So I couldn't did go down that road. So I needed to find something different. So I used to do the Spark 300, which is uh, 10 press ups, 10 sit ups, 10 dips. Right. I started knocking them out. Now it took me a while. Then I started doing it with 10 kilo vests. Started with 5 kilo vests, 10 kilo vests. Made me huge. But I was knocking my people up and going, you know what I'm leaving weirdo. But no one had touched the dip bar and the pull up bar because they were all your own, your own body weight. Yeah, so yeah. that was the stuff people stayed away from. I wanted to go near that because I didn't like Tom to keep it. I'll do my own thing over here. You do your own thing over there. <laughs> 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 then, then once I'd done that, I'd done the marathon. Then I started jogging. Found pain in that. Um, Hands my legs, no right runners and all that stuff. So I started doing that and started loving that with Little Martin. Um, and then when I got out, then I just ended up going. But and then I realised my family was only there for me in the prison as well. No one else came near me. The gang or not even friends. One or two friends did say whatever. I send up a letter or you know my one visit. I think I got out one one or two friends. You know, but very very little. Not enough to ruin to sort of go. They're fucking good friends. Or you know, I didn't really feel the love from that side. Uh, but bear in mind, I was, I was never one to love either. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a resonance. That's a what you put out is what you get. Back. Yeah, do you know what I mean? When looking back, like, 
Yeah. You rock around with these people for a reason. Yeah. There's no emotional attachment and just doing business, but we think there is. Just, no. Because you didn't have it in you to do it. You weren't taught that lesson. No, exactly. But the wife was always there and my family was there and that was important. But even when I got out, I just disrespect my wife again. Do you know what I mean? I was girlfriend at the time. I got married then. But I just disrespected them. I just went back to the gang and just forgot how good they were to me and what they meant to me. Because I hadn't got that empathy still. I just didn't have that love. I found it very hard to accept love and give love. Yeah. Um, and that's I needed something. I, manipulate, I could manipulate someone by pretending I loved them. I am telling them, but you would love them, but you just couldn't continue on. You do until you got them. So I'd love my wife's like, oh, once I had her, then it was grand. I have her now. Control. Just control the manipulation. Well, yeah, yeah. I was a monster. Yeah. All that stuff. So it's fake, you know what I mean? Um, and then when I got out then, look at me, son Ross was born in 2016. Um, and I just swore that was it. Like when he was born, he was a boy. So I had four girls and a boy at this stage. And I was like, wait for the boy for that long. And then when he lands, I was like, Joe, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be his hero. That's it. I'm just going to change. I'm going to be such a hero to him. I'm going to change my whole generation. Everything. To make sure that he has a better life. And he doesn't follow my footsteps. That was the top process behind that. And I just wanted to. But I knew I had to change me first because yeah. my dad used to tell me, don't drink, don't smoke, don't do that. And he's doing the only exact same. I'm like, you're a fucking hypocrite. Like, I fucking hate hypocrites. Well, you only said this to Lisa that was just sitting there to you. Kids do what we do, not what we say. Yeah. And I remember growing up as a kid, my man, I'd be doing something with that. Like, that was, and my dad was my hero. Oh, he'd done his eulogy and it was called really? Superheroes Eulogy. So it was lovely to hear you say that. My mom was going off on a mad one, but yeah, telling me to respect the neighbors, be kind to people. She'd bait the head off me and go mental. So your kids see you doing stuff like that. You're not you're not going to mirror back what we want. No, exactly. You have to be a doer. Like Jesus said, and done. What monkey see, monkey do. Is exactly. And I knew that. And I tell them when they go into the, when they go into the prison, no matter what, if you change your ways, good or bad, your kids will pick it up. Yeah. You they know, folly. They swim in their unconscious. Yeah, they will. And I said, and they want to be you all the time. So I knew that I had to change the generation. Now, I didn't go out to change the generation the way I actually did it. <laughs> I, I exceeded what I went out to do. Um, so I changed my circle. I got out of the gang, paid me bills, left the, left the circle. Now, not as easy as that, but it was a bit yeah, too old. Yeah, I can imagine. I got out in um, 2017. I actually went to watch my mate Mick Akio do an Ironman 2000, 2016, yeah. So are, you, are you mates with Mark as well, Mark? I see it. Seven. Yeah. I coach Mark, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be good friends with Mark, yeah. Fuck it. He's a legend. He's hilarious. I love his videos. He's funny as fuck. Very good, yeah. Lovely fella. Um, he done a 57 minute, 10, 10 mile yesterday in class. Be 24 pace. I love his videos. He's funny as fuck. He's good. He's a good lad. But, um, um, where was I going with that anyway? Yeah, so I, Mick, I went to watch Mick, I did know man, and then I said, uh, Jesus, maybe I could do that. Seeing a load of old lads doing it, no disrespect to old people. Like 50, 60 year olds, and I was like, fuck their blade flying. Killing it. Yeah. So I needed something at that time, and that just, as I said to you earlier, I think things happen for a reason. And I think that was, that, that found me, you know. It's like, hard to try out and found me. I'm watching the crumbs of success in your life, you know, your wife, the pastor that you told me about before we started. It's like, it's all, it's all there. It's very evident. Yeah. yeah. People just torn up. Just fucking to, and it resonates where you're at. Yeah, it continues and it continues and continues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the hours open all the time. Like, can they know? Can you what the fuck? Yeah, that happened. amazing. It's incredible, isn't yeah, it? It's amazing. But it's it, when you truly change, that happens, you know. Yeah, when you tr truly change and, and and show true change from the inside out, not yeah. outside yeah, in. Yeah, because people can see that. Yeah, it's yeah. You know? It's an energy. Yeah. You can feel it. Like, I walk into a room, I know who's doing that work, who's not. People have a dark energy going on with them, no disrespect, or judgment. Mm -hmm. I can just feel it. Yeah, you do. Like, even though you were in meditation groups and, as a participant, I will feel the energy from people, mm -hmm. just that body language, the way they speak, the eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we and you start doing the work, like, you, it's clear you're doing your work, we look different. Yeah, it's a yeah. vibration, isn't it? 100%, yeah. Same with John. Like, this is this is John, and then we meet with up here, like... That's John. John is the pastor and oh yeah yeah you yeah. see him everyone sees him he's like a bleeding glowing angel going around the 
the Dover's town, you know what I mean? He's just transparent. He's unreal, and you can't say anything to him. No, not that I ever do, but I've heard of that. Mm. Officers telling him, can't do that. I said, okay, no problem. Yeah. He just pushes on. Does Beautiful. the fuck? Beautiful. Yeah, Isn't that's, that's, that's a great like, attitude. When I go around making videos, and some people say, why do you say that? Why are you so honest? I said, because I want to create transparency. Yeah. I want to be no darkness in me, no shadow, no no. I just want to be all just... You have to be honest, you know, and, 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 and I'm, I am myself today. I used to play to the crowd and we used to look for fucking jazz hands and tell them what they wanted to hear. I don't care anymore. Tell them what I want to tell them. If you don't like it, toodaloo. <laughs> That's what I mean, in a nice way. You create your own tribe by who you are. People don't like it. That's fine. It's not personal. I won't take it personal. And I might still like you. Yeah. If you don't like me, it doesn't mean I don't like you. I was actually only talking to someone about this yesterday. He had an argument with this fellow. I went to a workshop he was doing and he was giving out to his mate years ago. And your mate was like, okay, well, how can I help you? He's like, what? I'm fucking out to give it out for 10 minutes. He goes, yeah, because you're my buddy. He goes, well, you're not my buddy. He goes, that doesn't matter. I'm still your buddy. People have shit going on in their lives. Not every day is going to be a good day for them. And they might lash out on you. And usually they lash out on the people that are close to them. But that, like we said earlier, I have to have empathy around that and understand that. How did you develop empathy and compassion for yourself? What's the work that you did around that? Council. Right. Yeah. We got the council and I got all the darkness out. Right. And when I went to council, he said, you, you you have the same trauma as someone would if they lost two kids. Yeah. And I and he also said I had he also said I had a dead boy inside me. Which is was hard to hear. That's what he told me. What did you make of that? What what did you what what does that scary. to you? That's it was scary, but it, it was this that the, the young Jer had died inside that you never let him to, to and you wouldn't believe Wishing. when he said that I swear to God this is what happened I'm not messing with when, when when he said that I seen a grey boy in the corner now it was obviously a vision of my imagination right oh, 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 well you know that's what I seen yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, obviously I pictured it when he yeah, said yeah. that I pictured me and I seen me as a boy in the corner like that was head down grey grey like it was fucking weird and I got afraid I actually got afraid from it I actually got like I was like she's that's scary like that's actually scared me but I'd done the walk. Done the walk. Done the walk. Done the walk. We faced up to it and it was the hardest thing I'd ever done was to actually face up to the fucking demons. I never even knew that about that dark until I actually start opening up that. It's like peeling an orange. Do you know what I mean? Just keep peeling away. And the thing is, when you do the walk, it can be a bit negative on you as well. That's why I had to stop doing talks for a good while. I was about, I could have been about 15, 16. No, I'd done the walk for about seven, eight years, but when I kept peeling away, right, mm. fucking eventually got to the car. The onion actually appeal the onion, right? The onion layers. And the, layers I, and the, I got to, you know, when I got to a stage where I was sitting there, wasn't talking to, mm. and I knew there was something else, right? And I was like, "We're done now," because I'm sort of happy, <laughs> you know. And he's like, <laughs> "It's a spiral. You go down, I go down, I go down." Look at me, go. You're not done. And I was oh. like, "You're just looking for me money." Yeah, yeah. I used to think that as well with councils. Do you know what it was? I realised what the car was, and I didn't want to face it. What was it? It was fucking aban- abandonment. I had abandonment trauma. Yeah, yeah, your abandonment yeah, issues. Abandonment issues. So I, you know, yeah, I don't want to go into too much into no, it. No. Um, just because I don't want to disrespect certain people. Of course. But I had abandonment issues where I had to have other relations, other relationships. Yeah, 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 yeah. And here's the thing, Jerry. Right? We can talk with other people abandoning us. Roy was doing singing lessons one day, and your man showed me on the video, and he goes, "Have a look at this," and I turned away. And I went to myself instantly. You just turned away from yourself. You just abandoned. You're going on about people abandoning you. You fucking abandoned yourself. Yeah. Just right here. Yeah. We abandon ourselves yeah. more than other people do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's about integrating that shadow, integrating that peace that we've abandoned. And no one does that for us. No. What do you say? The way I actually said to him, I said, look, I'm going to tell you. But I said, I'm not starting on it. I said, but I'll, I'll throw it up there. I plan to see it. Um, so I told him, I said, this is what it is. And he goes, that's okay. Sounds right. That sounds about right to me. Goes, and look, there's no rush and fair, fair play to him. But uh, I remember Christmas, it was a Christmas and he goes, I said, I'll do it. I kept saying, I'll do it next week. I said, look, I'm not doing it Christmas. I'll do it on in January. Yeah, yeah. He goes, just fucking do it. Yeah. When are you going to do it? Like? Yeah, yeah. I ended up doing it in December and it fucking killed me. Like, yeah. But, and it's about when you're ready to do it. No, all these things when, are... when can you, it, the, it's, it's like, when will you ever be ready? I don't think you're ever ready for that. Which? Bit. Like your soul knows. Yeah. Your soul knows. Yeah. You know, we'll do it. But that's why I, I chose that that time. And I was just, you know what? I just had a pain in me nuts hunting people. That's what it was. I, I actually, I actually had a, I was actually tired of hunting people. Yeah. Like, and I, yourself. I, yeah. But more other people. 
I was yeah, the, tired of listening to people as well telling me I was wanting them. Do you know, just drain me. And it was my fault. Mm. But you ever get and someone's just constantly at you, two or three people, like, and I was like, do you know what? They're right. And I'm not doing it anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of listening to it. I'm done. I'm, and the only way out is going to get back out. Only way to get over this is through it. It's true. It? <laughs> yeah. what, what did someone say to me yesterday at a workshop? There's a picture of a dog sitting on a nail. And he goes, why is he not getting off the nail? He'll only get off the nail when the pain gets too unbearable. Yeah, yeah. And that's like us. Yeah. Like when the pain of doing what we do, hurting other people, breaking people's heart. Because really what we're doing is we're breaking our own heart. But we think it's them, but really we're doing it to ourselves. Yeah. And and the thing is, people without trauma don't really understand it. You know, you're trying to tell them, this is trauma. Like, like I'm, do you know I mean? I'm not fucking taking the piss here. This is actually trauma that's hurting me. And I need this as a drug to stem that trauma. Like whatever I was doing, I needed in my life. Just to keep you alive. Just keep, kept me going. Like. And I only realised when I got to the end of that onion that I, if I don't have this, I'm fucked. We can't live. No order to be disordered. It's taking, it was like taking heroin off an addict. Yeah. That's what I felt like I was an addict to that. Yeah. I mean, I had me by the... Well, look, I got through it. When people use drugs, drink, mm. gambling, riding, yeah. education, yeah. status, social media, yeah. the suit of pain. But it's all there. It's all, you need to be, you need to understand your emotions and you need to, you can't live like that. Don't let a substance, don't let something rule you. Rule it. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't want to be ruled by anything. I didn't want to be ruled by anything. So I was like, I'm not letting this fucking rule me anymore. I'm going to be the fucking owner of my life. I'm going to be the king of my, my, my pa- uh, castle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not letting someone else fucking dictate when and when I can't have an attitude and when I wake up. And, do you know what I mean? And holding people. It's just, it just came to the stage where it's just like, yeah, I was just ready to do it. I was ready to do the work. And did that come to fruition then? Did you see the joys and the benefit? within your family with your wife and your kids can you see the effect of the work you de- do on your family the ripple effect on your kids now oh, do you know what it's only only this year because it's been hard and it's been tough and when you change something like that it's hard to get used to you know what I mean of course and you hurt like, you still hurt to the people but your emotions are still being regulated in a negative way because you're trying to control this into a new you I'm bringing it into a new life. And all of a sudden, this is like, I don't have that anymore. You know what I mean? And you're trying to think of other things. What else can I use? What can I do? And then you have a lot of negative stuff. And then that doesn't work because that's chaos brings chaos. Of course. Then you, you got to balance it back and go, right, what else can work? And then you, you know, so sport has always been the, the savior for me. Yes. Sport has always kept me in the straight hour. And sport's like my best mate. It's your love. It's, it's me love. I love sport. You know, and it'll never be out of my life. But, Sports has saved me yet again. Saved me growing up. Saved me when I got out of prison. And yet again, I'm back. And, I, and it's been my saga. And then, look, I'm doing the Bible studies with the kids out of prison. We're doing the de- seven deadly sins at the minute. Um, we done Pride last week. The week before, then Envy. And then, look, 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 like. In Oberstown? In Oberstown. We have seven seven kids that we walk with in the room. And uh, we explain the, each, each of the seven deadly sins one every Tuesday because it's leading up to Easter and he, in each one of them there's different passages on how to fix that deadly sin you know you read these passages um, and if you follow these rules you won't have envy you know what I mean? really powerful you must share that with me I have it there because I print them off the kids yeah. so last week was envy I'll bring in now this week I'll have envy I'll have an ex- explanation on envy and I'll have all the passages in the Bible on envy wow yeah and they bring it home we give them a when home, home, home is home for now. I tell them that's your gaff for a minute. Yeah, it is what it is. So they bring them back and they have that boil and they, we show them how to read passages. So, uh, and also they can print them. And I have them printed. They stick them up on their, on their walls and then they'll understand. Because we all have the seven deadly sins within us. And if you're ruled by that, your life is not good. Yeah. You've got you to gotta be aware before. I didn't understand what envy was. You know, I was like, wow, that's envy. I have a bit of that. How do I change that? So I you start the, the chink in the armor. They say everyone has a chink in the armor. Yeah, it's, the crack is where the light gets in. Yeah, but but like, look, we're never going to be perfect. No. We'll get aware of these emotions. Awareness is the greatest you can change. Fix them. It's the greatest agent for change, awareness. Yeah, so, but look, it, it's not, a, I'm very, yeah, uh, in a very privileged position to be actually part of that. You know what I mean? But again, as I said, 
me and John bounce off each other. John doesn't talk prison. I do. So when they don't understand what John's talking, I understand what John's talking. I translate the prison talk. Right. So they go, don't really understand. And then I pick up on their body language, like you said. I know they haven't got a clue what John's saying. Yeah, it's gone well, over the head. You, yeah. So you'll break it down. Then. So I'd say when, when I was a kid, yeah, 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 this is what John means. And they're like, yeah, well, what? Really? I mean, because I have that emotion around what he's saying. So I'd bring that into a life. To live lived experience. Yes. I was only saying that to Lisa earlier, the likes of you and Lisa and myself going to do these talks. We can bridge the gap, whether it be into the spiritual, into the church, whether it be into therapy. Because you know if you went to a young from, from Darren Day and Kula and you start talking about therapy and if you sounded like somebody with a, 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 a middle class accent or a doctor, they'd be like, fuck off, fuck you. But if Jerry came along and said, Counting's all right, I've done it, like blah, 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 blah. And they were like, yeah, really? Yeah. Let me help you with that. Exactly. When you go with your Bible talks, they're like, well, Jared does that and you look like a cool now, lad. They'd be like, he's fucking sound. Yeah, and that's, where, that's what we do. Because that's what John says. He says, you're a little gem because I wouldn't get this opportunity without you because they wouldn't come to me on their own. Yeah. But because I tell, because uh, when I get them in my class. You sound and look like them. Yeah, I do triathlon classes. So I'll just give you a long story short. I went yeah. down and gave talks out there. A fella called Damon Hernan. Um, He's the CEO of Overstown. You know, he'd be like the, the main man. Um, his mate actually got in contact with him. They got in contact with me to give talks. So we went down and got five or six talks in the prison. It made such an impact on them. Then they asked for a meeting and they, they said, Slan, you can deal with the permits. I said, yeah, just to vent the negative into a positive through sport, which is what I do. Because yeah. I believe that if you have pain, you can use sport as that medicine to vent into it. Yeah. That's what I do. I became, that's why I became so good. If you could throw in your poison into your pocket. Yeah. It was like fucking loving it. Pain. It's not pain. What the is pain? This is sport. <laughs> you fucking mad or what? We all choose our poison. Yeah. We? But I love that. And I still love it to this day. So I wanted to do that, which has worked very well. But like that, I don't have a walkie talkie. I don't have a panic button. I looked at it. They've never even offered me them because I wouldn't take them. Yeah, you're not authority. I'm not one of them as such. And that's no disrespect. I just, no, 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 no. I want to be just the Yeah, I'm just. One of the lads, I mean, I'm just coming in and coach. Um, but when I'm doing one on ones, I only get two at a time. Then I have to chat to them. You know what I'm saying? Look, at it. it's not fucking easy. Once you get it, because it took me about six months to get into a relationship with them, really, like, having a good chat with them, really loading up. Because literally just come in and look at you, like, what the fuck is this? He's just another one. Yeah. Here we go again. So, what works for you? What tools do you use to, 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 to get in with them? Like if you're walking the couple thing, what's the what's the what's the, the way in for them? I am always looking for that way. You don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Never ask questions. Because they're not gonna tell you first of all. And second of all, um they tell you when they want to tell you. And they're never gonna tell you, they won't tell you anyway. So you have to have that fucking Don't ask questions. Don't ask, why are you ask questions for? Mind your own business. Everyone in their life. Do you know what I mean, but Everything in their life, anyone that asked questions was looking to get something out of them or were looking to fucking put them somewhere. Or, you know, authority. Authority ask Don't questions. trust. Don't trust. So don't ask. Just, you're there to train them. How's things? What do you want to do? Want to do a bit of training? Yeah. What do you want to do? Anything. Do what you want. There's a bike. Jump on the bike. Have a chat. There's a drink. And that's it. And that's all you have to do. Just be the presence. Just, Just turn. be there. Just be there. Because everyone asks them questions. Everyone tells them what to do. Yeah. Fuck off. No one wants to be told what to do. do like, realistically, no one wants to be told what to do. But it's the people who stand there and just are there for them. Yeah. Like you said, you know, none of your mates showed up. No one showed up. So if you can show up for them That's all. and support them. That's all I do. Support them. If they want to talk, I'll talk. They want to ask me a question, I'll answer the question. You know what I mean? And then once I have that relationship, then I can start going, look at, do you know, when you get out, go and do some sports. You know, this is what keeps you on the train. Now, I'm telling you now, this is what, if you go to the gym, instead of going to the pub, instead of going to the, on the sniff, go to the gym. The gym will be always there for you. Training will always be there for you. Always there for you. you know what I mean? Because they don't have that. They don't have them people that were there for them. So that's why training was so important in my life. So I try and get them to keep that as a tool. So when you go out and you feel down, go and train. Go for a run. Do something. Training will save your life. Yeah. That's the message I carry in there. And then hope and then look at, they know I give talks in the prisons and then when they get, see a lot of them in there, when they turn 18, they go to the main prison if the sentence is big enough. So I can give them that little bit of advice. Look at when you go up, keep your head down. You know what I mean? But to explain to them how the prison works, standard and there's different um, tiers when you go in initially. 
get into tier four, like, uh, you get more, do you know what I mean? Just keep opening yourself up. What do you mean by the tiers? Is that just the, so you want the, the levels in a prison? Level, yeah, levels. Like, you get more calls, do you know what I mean? You get, you get a better prison, do you know what I mean? When you're not, you know, penal again, so. Mm. Yeah, so it's all good. But, um, looking back on your life, looking back on young Jerry, if you could give any wisdom to that piece, what would you, what would your, what would your words of wisdom be to that? Um, growing up, yeah, yeah. No, there's not much I could change to be honest. With you. you wouldn't, I couldn't, like I could if I could, but I wouldn't have the, I wouldn't have the tools, I wouldn't have the, yeah, I wouldn't have had the, the knowledge. You know, if I knew no, if I knew now what I know knew then, yeah. of course I could change it, but I wouldn't have had the the strength or the tools or to change anything. Um, so I actually, I've asked this, been asked this question before. Like I don't what I could do. I do my best. Yeah, that's you a great show. That's all I done. Doing your best. I do my best. I done what I thought was right, and now none of my family were hurt. No, I mean that was my objective. I was getting threatened and they were getting threatened. And I mean, the objective was joining the gang was to make sure my family weren't hurt. That was it. And none of my family got hurt. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, I think I've done well. I'm happy enough. Um, and th- as I said, all that experience and all that shit I went through, you know, I think I went through all that shit to now be able to help here with the experience I have. I'm happy enough to done through that shit. Mm-hmm. I'll take on the champions. <laughs> <laughs> all the, 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 the challenges you've been through, it's led you on to do a bit of work on, on RTE and a few shows. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, best thing I've ever probably done or been on was at uh, Ugman Hill Week in class. What was that like? Unreal. Like The men, them Rangers, a different breed. Are they? Different, different men, different people. People, it's a privilege to be around them. Like you, you, that, you'd, you'd shine in that environment. Unreal, they were. They were fucking class. Now, I'm much better now. At the time, I was still struggling, but I needed it, you know. Again, I went there for a reason. Yeah. There was a, there was a, there was a big um, learning curve for me around that because um, one of the Rangers <laughs> kept telling me my weaknesses, kept saying, yeah, fucking shy at this. And I knew he wasn't lying because I knew he was right. Yeah, because I knew oh, Jesus. they were my weaknesses. No, he wasn't winding me up. Like when you talk about your weakness, what, what do you mean? Just... Like I was in charge of a Brava team. We had to carry these civilians up with club mounts. There was a big explosion. You want to see this? Now this class. We're in Brava and Alpha and there's six or something on each side and we're going through the Wicklow forest with guns. Not real guns, but yeah. But we were in it. They yeah, were all We were fucking going to war here. That was that. <laughs> and you know what it's like to go to war. Right. We're like kids. And like, but I, was, I was genuinely going to war. Like, I was... Anyway, we had to go up and brief these, uh, get information from these two soldiers, right? And just as we got blessed the lakes, you know, blessed the lakes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a bit by that. Next one, boom, big explosion went off, right? And then we had to go up there, and the lad legs were blown off and all. It was obviously choreographed, but it was fucking glass, blood everywhere, spitting it up. Legs gone. Ugh. You know, Papa, what? there's these two lads that go around, we know now, these two lads go around, the Scottish lads, they go around doing this for armies yeah. as, a, as a, an exercise. But you want to see how realistic this was? Like hands over there and legs. I was like, what the fuck? No one that wasn't real, but not, but then going, is this real? Like when we were saying about walking into prison, your body doesn't know if this is real or not. Didn't care. We had to save them. That was our job. If you didn't do it, we got fucked off the course, right? So it is what it is. Anyway, Brav and Alpha ended up mixing up. So my team was gone. Their team was, it was all mixed. We panicked. So we had a uh, stretch out with spilling on it. He's crying and blood coming out of his fucking glass. <laughs> It was glass, like, my kind of up the, the, you ever see the wooden walkway up there? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. two beams, and it's slushy, and it's November, and we can't walk in the beams, we had to walk on the outside, so we're out mucking, you know what I mean? And then we had to swap, we had to drop them every few minutes, and I was like, you're supposed to say lower. I'd say, three, two, one, lower, and I kept saying drop. Yes, and many times have you told, I got fucking crucified, right? you're not a leader, you're fucking weak, you can't fucking control your team, oh, and, and it was right. Because I couldn't, because I hadn't got that internal strength. Do you know what I mean? Wow. And I was like, yeah, fuck are you? He's pulling me out from the everyone. He's right. Yeah, and that hurt me, but it was a great learning curve for me. Because, I, you know, when you go up and open, you know, you're like, fuck. It really hurt me, but I continued on on the, on the exercise. Finished out the exercise. And the punishment was um, to run after the truck for a kilometre. <laughs> we lost. Yeah, so we all had to run after the truck and be fucking crucified that. That was a tough, tough day. Wow. 
but it was a great one because all my weaknesses then when I left that course, I done, done, I was two hours into the seventh week, seventh day. But um, I wrote down all the all the weeks I had and I got after each and every one of them. Did you? Yeah. That's incredible. I got massive growth in that. And what other shows has you done there? Done Eating with the Enemy. What was that like for you? Oh, well, I met Philip in the south side. Um, so it was his point of view. I was asked to go on that by a pal of mine, uh, Dr. Mally Coyen. I was asked about going and doing the show. I just it didn't sit for me at the time. I was, I'm not so sure about this. Yeah, well, it was basically what he told me. He told me, trash her out. So he was all politics now, and you should be using politics. Now you're saying politics, sure, you, they don't fucking do harm for you. You get your vote, and then they change the legislation, and they don't really actually follow through on the words. So I don't vote. You know, when he ended up making a good point, and he sort of, well, I, I did agree with him. He says, if you want to change with my platform, yeah. and if I want to do true change, you have to go through uh, politicians. I have to go the right route, route, which made sense because it's easier said than done, but they're the ones that actually make the legislation. So you want to make true change within your area, in your community, true change, you've got to go through a politician. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the only way you're going to bring it to, to the right areas. I'm interested in transferable skills. How do you use your background, your experience, the, the, the childhood, the stuff that you went through, i.e. in the Rangers, that talk, your future stuff? How do you transfer that skills? What are the skills you use? Because I use my past, my networking, my, my people skills, my fucking ducking and diving. But now I use it in the world that I walk in, compassion, teach and love. How do you transfer your skills or what skills do you transfer over? Um, I don't know. Um, don't really totally understand the question. You know, how do I use what I've learned, my learned experience? From from your from your youth, you know. Yeah, well, the, 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 the difficult times, the pain, the understanding. Yeah. The, okay, so... I'm best in prisons because I have a lot of empathy and I know what it feels to be feel like nothing not to people to think you're nothing and to not have that so, no people believe in you so I have a lot of empathy around people like that and, I, and every time I see someone in prison or in the in the kids prison I think of myself and that just peels me right back and that's what I do just that that's me so what are you going to do for him that you want you see yourself in people? Yeah, I see myself in people, yeah. 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 And that gives me empathy straight away. In an instant, I have empathy. It brings you right back. It me back. That's what I say to everyone. It's it, Pain is a great teacher, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you know, it can really teach us. Because sometimes we try to hide our kids, our family from pain, but we're denying them in education. We're denying them a teacher. We're denying them a, a, a valuable skill set going forward, isn't it? Absolutely. Like, I mean, the, my, my experiences, I suppose... Will definitely come out with my kids, you know what I mean? But I was unaware of a lot of stuff going up. Up until like the last three years, I was unaware of my, what I was doing. So I suppose you have to be aware of of, of what you're doing, do you know what I mean? And how you're hurting people. To be then able to tackle that emotion and fix it. First thing is awareness. Awareness is the greatest agent for, for change, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And you have to wake up to it because you and I were unconscious for years because we are driven by unconscious people and no yeah. pay them. Exactly. It's waking up to that, isn't it? It's waking up to it and, and, and getting the help, do you know what I mean? Like, just one thing, knowing it, um, and being aware of it, but then you have to fix it, you know? And there's strength in that. So you have to fix it, because there's no point in knowing it and being aware of it. You're not going to do something about it. Then you're pissed against the wind. You might as well not know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes you, like me, sometimes I say, oh, I wish I fucking didn't know it, because now, like you, when something comes up for me, yeah. like stuff in relationships, because if you want to work on anything, Get into a relationship. You want to work on love? Get into a relationship. Yeah. What your wife taught you. Like you can be at home doing your thing, doing your training, think you have it all sorted. But then when you get into a relationship, this stuff comes up, you become aware of it. Fuck. Yeah. I wish I didn't know this. Good wife will pull you on your shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's done through love. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I tell the lads as well. If the loved ones is telling you're an asshole, you aren't loyal, you are an asshole. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's real, like, they're not lying. They, they Sometimes see. your mother got you last, but what I mean by that is if they're pulling you on your bullshit. Yeah. You know, your real bullshit. And where most people will swallow it. Yeah. They'd be like, I see how you're behaving, I see the way you're on. That's just bullshit. But but you'll run away from that because you don't want to hear it. You don't. So all of a sudden they're cunts and you want blow, smoke blown up your ass by someone who doesn't even love you. They're the fake people. We don't need fake people in life. We need love and the real people. And to be told the way you're acting. And then you'll face up to it. Like you have to fucking you have to believe the people who are telling you stuff. There has to be some truth. 
Yeah, yeah. So how much think about that, you know? What's what's the future, Hobie? What plans have you got in the future? What what are you working on? What what what's the challenges? What do you do? Tell us a little bit about what you're doing. What uh, you're up there. Look at the minute I'm so I'm online coach. So I do a lot of online. I'm working in Overstown, my own gym out there, and I'm a mechanical engineer in Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Lift something down to me. I'm there about seven months now. And then that's a new new culture to me, you know what I mean? So Working in a, in an office with people. Yeah. What what challenges do you find in that? Just like, you know, computers, it's nine to five. For first of all, like I haven't done nine to five in about eight years. Really? Um and then just being around not even being around people but I don't mind being around people. I don't I do do prefer to be on my own to be honest with you. But I don't mind, you know what I mean, being around people. But it's just all new, do you know what I mean? Do I want to be on the night to fight the rest of my life? Do I want to be on the hamster wheel? I think there's more to life than that. I've been off for two years. Do you know what I mean? And I've been off it and I've been working on it. And to be honest with you, like, I'm financially all right without it. So it was just to, to see, did I want that? And because of the multinational, I also wanted to take it because of a conviction. I wanted to show people Great. that you can do it. Because when you go into the prisons, you know, I wouldn't get that. Well, you can't, actually can. Put the walk in and get on. You know, it's like I got my taxi license took me four years. I got that just for that reason as well. Wow. Just say, yes, you can. Actually, you can. Just break the norms, the social norms. You can't do that. Prisoners don't do that. I don't like bullshit. I told you before at the start, I don't like bullshitters. I like people to say, if you can do it, you can do it themselves. So that's why I've done all them things. That's why I got my taxi license. That's why I got a job on Amazon. Because I wanted to prove a point. And look, at if, if it's for me, it'll be for me. But if it's not, I'll learn me. And it's a good lesson I've learned from Amazon because if I do stay, then it was for me. If I don't, I'll learn that prisons are for me. I'll know where I am. And as, as, as you know, Rory Stories, yeah. good friend of mine, gave a talk out in Overstown for us. Um, and he said, stay in your lane. You know, find your lane, stay in this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, you don't have, look, I know it's good to be out of your comfort zone, but if you're walking in somewhere you don't want to walk, you know, and there's no love there, find your lane. Yeah. You know, and you'll and you'll become you'll become valuable in your own lane, you know what I mean? And that's that was a good good advice I got from him. I love sitting down with people and understanding what they do and what makes them great. And you obviously are just an incredible human being and I'm impressed just sitting here beside you, listening to your mindset. What keeps you on your game? What do you do? What are the things you could share with me? Books you read, your practices, your meditate. What what do you do? What's your what's your go thing to? <laughs> Yeah, I don't read books, believe it or not. Right. Maybe asleep. I train that hard that when I read books, I just go. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I do want to read books, right? Um, I like, do you know what? I, I know where I am now. I know what I need in my life. Yeah. It's not drugs, it's not drinks, it's not women. Yeah, it is woman, one woman, my wife. Yeah. I know that. Um, respect my wife, respect my family. Um, but I love to try and like I, I done fifty k last week around Holt because I want to find me pain. Because if I don't have that, I will end up on the drinking drugs. So that's where I know who I am. So find out who you are and what what you need in your life as a positive, mm. and tap into that. Because I tap into that. I don't, and I don't care. I'm not saying this because I want people to say, oh he's fucking. I don't call bollocks. Do you know what people think? Do you know what I mean? I, I genuinely don't. Yeah. I'm going back up this week. I'm gonna do sixty five k. Because I want to, I want to feel the pain. I want to tap into that pain. There's a thin line between genius and insanity, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? It's just beautiful up there. That and no one goes up there. No one does that. And I don't do it because of anyone else. Don't give a bollocks. But I do it because that's where I find pain. And I go soul searching up there. I'm up there on Friday night and I was fucking pissing. You remember Friday night? Yeah, yeah. The snow and all that. I'm up there. And Dublin was locking down. Everywhere was locking down. You're out running. I went out at eight o'clock specifically for a reason. It was the end of the week, very tired. I'd done far talks, I was mentally drained. And I knew that was the time I was going to feel the most. So I said, I'm going up now. Because this is where I get through growth. I'm rocking around there. So I'm fucking. <clears throat> I'm tapping into the soul. It's tapping. You're a soul there, Jack. Yeah. It's beautiful. I, I, I want to just. It's very, very humbling. Questions. Uh, what's the greatest piece of advice you've ever been given? Or? Ever been given? Yeah. Or advice that you think is valuable then, even? Just, the best advice I'd give someone is, is, um, is to own your own shit. Own your own shit. Man, fucking man up. Stop blaming. 
Stop blaming everyone else, man. It's so fucking wrong. Put on yourself. Stop blaming your wife. Stop blaming your girlfriend, whoever you go out with. Stop blaming your best friends, your fucking ma. Have a look at yourself in the mirror. You understand. Maybe this is me. And when you start, when you look at that and you start pointing lanterns through that, you find a way out. You start becoming the person you want to become. Because I've become the person I want to become today with the help of a good wife. But I put a lot of work in myself as well, you know what I mean? And I've been aware of my emotions. Yeah, but I, but I am a type of person that doesn't like bullshit. I told you that. Yeah. I don't like fucking bullshit. But you're not just saying them. Listen to all that you've done. You just show the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. well, that's it. And that's you have to do. Show up. Show up for your family. See, I went there by saying I want to change the generation. And what I meant by that was I wasn't becoming a professional athlete. I wasn't becoming this top athlete where everyone else thought I was great. No, nothing to do with that. Because you see, when I got the professional license, I'm like, can this pro and they all smoke long my ass. Meant nothing to me. But you know what? Now that I have my family and I have my generation in order and my fucking family in order, it's the most important thing to me. That's where it's at, boys. <laughs> yeah. You're your greatest judge and jury. I yeah. hear that from yeah. you. No one judges you or has you held accountable than you. No, I owe myself. That's right here. Yeah, yeah. It's deadly. Yeah. But you have to. Because the only, there's only one way to change a generation and that's to change all the bad traits you have. It's an inside out rather than outside in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very beautiful when you get that inside right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Takes a bit of work, so isn't it? Takes a bit of work. I'm I'm eleven years. Like I I started the journey at forty two. Yeah. When I get out of prison. Uh to go twenty two. I'm eleven years at oh I swear to God only this year. And I've took over with a boy reading. I read to my wife at night, we pick a passage and a and a passage will come out and I'll just lick it. And I honestly be just open point and read. And it's beautiful. And we get messages all the time. Me and my girlfriend sat last night. I was reading. Her, I watched the the film on Mary Magdalene. Yeah, fucking yeah. incredible. And I'm reading a piece out of my Bible around my uh, have a prayer book. You imagine Jared in the nineties, Matt in the eighties. <laughs> yeah, telling Fuck someone yeah. telling you you'll be sitting in the bedroom with yeah. your wife or your girlfriend reading passages of the Bible about Mary Magdalene and talking yeah. about Jesus. Jesus appears to me all the time. Yeah. It's mental, isn't it? And the thing is, I couldn't give a fuck. I couldn't give a fuck. I wear hot <laughs> socks. I love Jesus. But I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy to. Happy. You know, I'm happy to accept that. Yeah. You know, I'm happy to accept that love in my life. Because I actually never felt love like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I actually Real feel backed. I feel love. I feel backed now. I actually, I can't, I can't explain it. I feel loved. And that's how it's Real simple. Yeah. Simple. I end up all I end all podcasts with what's the one thing you like people to take away after listening to this interview? What would that be to you? Hope, as I said, you start. I I, I try to bring hope where, wherever I go. Um, don't mind me and what I've achieved. That's not what you're looking for. But look at what I've been through. Um, and your heart is as 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 bad as my heart. It doesn't matter if it's not as as um as deep as mine. We all hurt the same, I believe. We all cut the same. So if you can take on from it, take this. Um, we've been put on this earth by a generation of people before us that might have had trauma in their life and they just haven't got the strength to fix themselves. Um, but by us being aware of that and fixing yourself, it's totally up to you to, to look after yourself and grab the reins by, by the scruff. Um, but nothing changes unless you change. You know, so... It's a, it's a tough journey and you'll fail and fail and fail and fail and fail. You just got to keep getting back up on that horse. And eventually, someday, you'll be happy. You're riding off into the sunset and you're <laughs> <a play> ball. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence is going back in the self-awareness and the confidence. It all comes back to you. Because I thought I'd never be confident again. Honest to God. It was drained, but it was just myself in our self. Me in our, in our confidence was taken from me. Yeah. It was a way back. And what did you say at the very start? And we say this to people when I go into AA groups or CA groups to do work. No one's coming to save you. No, no. You're responsible for your saving. Yeah. And it's, I know that might be hard for people, but it's very fucking empowering to know that you could do it all yourself. No AA, no Jesus, no fucking doctor, psychotherapist, mm. me or you. You have to put your hand up and grab the boy. Yeah. Or you have to take the help if you've asked for help or ask God to get down on your knees. You've got to do the praying. Yeah. It's real simple, isn't it? you got to be vulnerable and be open for you. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I'm not. I know this probably sounds like blown smoke up your hole, but you're an incredible fucking human, man. You're Thanks. deadly. I'm sitting here going, you inspired the fuck out of me. <laughs> it's deadly. No, I appreciate it, man. And look at, uh, I say this all the time when I do podcasts. It's podcasts are platforms to help people. Yeah. And they are like, they're very, very, 
Um, they're needed in society, you know. And who do we know we're going to reach? We yeah. probably never know who we're going to reach, but that's not what it's about. No, we just do the thing and just, and just let it go. Can't see it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, looking well done to yourself, and I hope I well, wish you all the success going forward. Thanks, brother. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so there you go. There's a wrap. Oh, before we go, if people want to find you, want to do work with you, where will they get you? I forgot to say that. So I have a website, jrevan.com, and I'm also on Instagram, jrevan5. Deadly. So if you want to do any coaching with Jerry, you want to follow his work, support him, that's where you'll find him. Okay, so all interviews are brought to you for Lisa and Sandra from Shannon's Hope Line. The girls are on the last episode. Amazing girls doing amazing work in the liberties around mental health. Uh, me, Noel, me pal Noel Royley from Rooney Media Graphic helped me with all my podcast stuff. And then the main man on the camera over there, Matt, podcastdublin.ie. If you want to work with these amazing people, they do the studio, this kills studio. If you want to rent this, they do podcast editing and services. And they're also running training, podcast training. So if that's something you want to get started, give them a show. That leaves me just to say, Jer, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thanks to you guys for listening and watching and sharing my work. Yup the flats, yup the fucking flats. And mind your little self, take yup, care. Yup the kill lock. Yup the kill lock, yup the black sheep. Did you ever drink the black sheep years ago? Yeah. Yup the kill lock running club, by the way. Yup the kill lock running club. That's important. Deadly. Thanks, that, Jer. Thank you.